will get started here in a minute. All right, I'll let some people uh, log on. I appreciate you all being on today. It's uh, some of it's fortunate and unfortunate. I see a few people on uh, from the East Coast. Welcome. Uh, this event was supposed to be live today, but unfortunately, uh, as we've learned over the last year and a half, you have to adapt and overcome. Uh, so we had uh, several COVID cases in our office, and I'm waiting for my results back, so I did not want to be live, and uh, the venue did not really want us there live. So, um, Terry, if you could mute everybody. Um, I appreciate you guys being on today. Um, the reason for this Lunch and Learn, we actually changed the subject, is I'm just hearing a ton of realtors that I work with, business partners that I refer business with, students that I have uh, in the core. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm a, a national coach for mortgage lenders and realtors, a great program called the core training. And almost everybody I speak to, their leads are down uh, from their heights. So uh, we're seeing leads down. Um, and I think I've had the conversation, some of my loan officers are on too, um, that business has been too easy for the last year and a half, um, especially on the lending side. It has been, um, gosh, you just haven't had to work that hard to generate leads. So uh, I believe the key to any business is good, warm leads that convert at a high level that are referred with value. So uh, being the national sales coach and the access to all the information that, that I have and that I've been trained on, I'm blessed to just get to implement that in my business and uh, certainly give that back to you all. So that is the intention of today is how to generate warm leads that close. Uh, so first and foremost, why am I uh, able to present on this? Number one, uh, I've just been a, a very high producing loan officer. I think we all sell something uh, different, um, but our, our, our industry is similar, right? So I've been a top 1% mortgage originator since 2013, uh, been in the top 200 of mortgage bankers uh, since 2014, uh, been the same in the Scotsman Guide, um, one of the top 25 originators in our coaching program. Uh, a lot of my tactics come from being a former financial advisor, and uh, I did pretty well with finance in college too. So uh, I think a lot of presenters don't qualify themselves. Um, I would say the last thing to kind of qualify me is my income uh, has gone up almost 800% since I started in my coaching program. So my income has increased 800% uh, percent, uh, since I started implementing these tactics. And none of this is new, none of this I created. These are just things I've stole uh, within our coaching program that I want to roll out to you. So first and foremost, what can we do to generate warm leads, warm leads at close? Number one, we can get to know them better. Uh, so there's a form we have. Any of you that want it, uh, just raise your hand, enter your email in the chat, and we will send that back out to you. Uh, so you can just steal ours and use it in your business. Uh, and it's called an all about you form. And what the All About You form does is it just allows you to get to know your client better. Um, and why this is so important, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think it's a little bit important for the current deal that you're doing. Um, if I can speak to Josh and know his daughter's name and say, hey, uh, you know, is Taylor starting her first day of school? What's Taylor need for a bedroom? Is she going to be uh, around when you're looking for this new house with your wife, Sadie? Um, that's more impactful if I call them by name than if I say, hey, what's your family name? It's just more personal. So it helps you create a better relationship with your current clients. 
uh, what it really does and what I've found that wasn't my intentions of taking it initially. I just wanted to get to know my clients better. I wanted to do a better job at being in relationship with them. Uh, I will be just transparent with you. The thing I struggle the most with is the relationship, right? I'm, I'm now bald headed. I kind of look mean. I am mean at times. I'm just not very good with the friendly relationship, right? And I'm working really hard on myself to be better with the relationship. So this was just a tactic that I needed because I struggle being super personal with people. This has allowed me to be warmer with them talk through uh, things with them and just get to know them better. And I found that I wasn't doing a great job connecting with them because I just wasn't asking the right questions. So the all about you form is super important, but the, the kind of super, super power behind it, guys, is it's awesome when you get the client in three, four years. Uh, so I've learned that in Chicago, uh, it's about every 5.5 years. And for those of you join us on the East Coast, uh, some of the top agents I work with here say it's about every seven years. So someone moves every five and a half years in the bigger cities and in some of the smaller big cities like Charlotte, which I also conduct business in. It's about every seven years, right? So what I was doing is I was ignoring my database. I was ignoring these people and I wasn't getting their business the second time around. You can uh, learn from my mistakes and avoid that. And one of the reasons I believe I wasn't getting their business the second time around, I wasn't in relationship with them. I didn't know uh, their family members' names. I didn't know how many kids they have. I didn't know animal rescue was super important to them. I didn't know what closing gifts to buy them. So um, this will just help you be in better relationship with your client. Uh, one of my top agents, um, she has a survey and, um, you know, what it does for her is it allows her to get to know the client from the beginning and do an effective buyer consultation with them. So I think it's just a great step and a great icebreaker um, to get to know the client better and to complete your buyer consultation with them or your listing presentation with them. So it's called the All About You form. Um, and like I said, the super power behind it is the next time you call them. And I'll go over it here in a little bit what that system is. But when I called them, I just got done with a call um, from a past client. We were doing a semi-annual mortgage review with her. And you guys could do the same after someone bought a house. Check in with them in six months. See what they need. She needed a, uh, a attorney for a will. So now I can hook up my attorney and I can ask him for a, 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 a lead back, right? Um, but I was able to talk to her about the Cubs. She said one, her biggest, um, her favorite sports team was the Cubs. Mine is too. So we connected and bonded on that a little bit. We talked about all the players they traded. We talked about how bad they suck right now, how we're not going to any games. And it just allowed us to form this little bond for about 30 seconds, right? Um, I also knew that she was in this home for only five years. So I asked her, hey, have you considered looking at the next home that you're going to buy? Um, have you given that any thoughts? What areas would you buy? In? That then allows me to put future follow-ups in my calendar to discuss her potential move. Cool? So the All About You form, if you take nothing away from today, it is a game changer. It is the form uh, that will allow you to be in better relationship with them during the transaction. It will allow you to be in better relationship with them in your follow-up so you have a better shot at their next transaction. And it will also allow you to uh, have ease of use for your closing gifts. Because sometimes I struggle with the closing gift, knowing what they want. You can just ask them what they want. You can see it lists their hobbies, their restaurants. So the all about you form, starting your process with that is just a complete game changer. I'll be honest with you, I thought it was foolish a little bit. I thought it was a little uh, too wishy-washy for me. Uh, it's not. It is just the best form that you can utilize to be in better relationship with your client. So all about you form is the first thing I'd like you to take away. Guys, I think there's three things that we can lean on to get a client. Number one is being in the relationship with them. Okay. First and foremost, if a lot of people will just do business with you because they like you, 
Um, so the all about you form will help you be in better relationship. Number two, the second way I believe you can get business from a client and close a client is be an advisor. Know your market well, know your statistics, know their neighborhood, know what properties are on the market in that area, know what um, the trends are in that area, being the advisor, being the expert, right? And the third is having sales skills, being able to use your sales skills, close and close hard. So I'll give you some sales techniques at the end that work really well. Cool. The second thing we want to work on is creating our list creating our list. So in my coaching program, we have a theme day calling plan. We have a theme day calling plan. Uh, for realtors, they call uh, 30 of their most important people on Mondays. Now, who is that VIP? They could be uh, a financial advisor, a divorce attorney, past clients that refer them, an HR coordinator, uh, of a company that you're well connected with. It could be a lot of different groups of people. I usually look at these people to be uh, professionals, right? Business professionals that understand what a referral is, okay? Um, a second group we can create is our top 50 favorite past clients. Um, these are people we want to go out to eat with. We want to have lunch with. We want to have dinner with. Uh, unfortunately, I had to... Uh, cancel my trip uh, today. I was meeting with some clients uh, that were on my top 50 favorite client list. One of them just became a financial advisor. I wanted to learn how I could help his business. So that is another uh, list that you can call on. You can have your vendor list. Guys, I think sometimes as realtors, you underestimate your power. You are like the Mac daddies and Mac women of the referral partners. Like you guys create a lot of livelihoods. You guys, uh, buying a home can create a job for up to 14 people. Never underestimate your power in that referral. Um, it helps out an insurance provider, it helps out an appraiser, title companies, attorneys, lenders, um, homeowners associations. Like there's a lot of people that um, you guys should get to know that you should keep on your vendor list. And once in a while, you should ask them for their willingness to look for a referral back to you. Now, I will tell you as a lender, like I can't ever refer you guys as much as you can refer me, um, but I can refer your homeowner's insurance agent and I can probably refer him better than you can. And it's a very just natural handoff to go to the lender, to the homeowner's insurance provider. Right. And if you're running that transaction and I'm your lending partner and you say, Chad, I want you to use my insurance guy every time um, because he sends me business back. I'm going to listen and I'm going to do everything I can to tee him or her up effectively. Right. So make sure that you have lists organized. I think the reason there's two reasons people don't call the prospect. Number one, they don't they're not prepared. They don't know who to call. Number two, it's not organized. Uh, so they don't have these lists. So um, I'll dive a little deeper on these lists and what to create and who to put on them. But getting organized and putting them together is is a first step into creating these lists. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. So what can you do to cater to your lists? Um, I have five lists. I have my top 40 realtor list. Some of you on here are on that list. Um, I have my listing agents that I'm in a deal with. I'm calling them every Tuesday. I have my old leads and new leads. Those are people that I haven't converted into a client yet, or we've pre-approved them. They're out looking at properties. Thursdays, I have my past client list and my top 50 favorite past clients. Uh, and then Fridays, we have our VIPs, right? So once we have these lists, what do we do with them? We have client appreciation events. Uh, I just got on a, a webcast for the Denver area, Denver metro area uh, realtors. It's like our car, our Chicago Association of Realtors that went there. Talked about client appreciation parties. Uh, there's just some awesome ideas and people think that they have to cost a ton of money. They don't. You can have a financial advisor on a Zoom call for a half hour and talk about why investments are important. Um, you can 
we had a, a woman who's an actress do a, a kid sing along. Um, took a half hour, a kid sung along for a song. There's like 20 people on, right? We got four deals from it. So don't overthink what you have to do for client events. Um, you can share things of value. I think a budget is a really good thing to share with a client. I see so many people get to us and they don't even know what a budget is or, and have never been on one. Um, and I think it's just something that you could add a lot of value with. Um, you could create a vendor of the month program. Uh, highlighting your landscaper, highlighting your interior designer, doing everything you can to focus on one of your vendors so then you can ask for uh, transactions in return. And uh, the best of them all is a birthday program. People just light up when they get presents on their birthday, um, when they get cards on their birthday, when they get a call on their birthday. I have clients that... Um, I haven't heard from in several years. We make a birthday call to them. They they always call back and it just, there's always an ROI after it. We just always seem to get a lot of referrals from people after the birthday calls. Our top 50 favorite fast clients, we send uh, a box of brownies out to them and, uh, and a gift card to their favorite restaurant from their All About You form. So, uh, take a few things. I'm not saying you have to do it all. If you're not doing anything, it's hard to like go and do all this. But what I want you guys to do is just take two or three things from today that you can implement, implement in your business because uh, I know it will help you generate more leads. Cool. So the first thing you got to do is pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Now, this is what I've been talking about with some of my loan officers on. It's been so easy the last year and a half uh, can I get a show of hands virtually? Just do the uh, check the raise the hand. How many of you, your phone's just been ringing until about the last month or so, and it's been nonstop and you haven't had to do much to generate leads? I know that's been us. We haven't had to do a whole lot to get people to uh, to call us. Um, I I think that's over, and it seems to at least be for the fall season, we're going to have to work hard to finish the year strong. So who is an easy person to pick up and call? Uh, past clients and current clients, right? Uh, every Wednesday, we update our current clients. Our clients out looking for uh, a property, we're updating them. I'm giving them a market update. I'm asking them if they have any questions on their home search. I'm asking them if I'm you guys, Hey, is there any properties that I sent you that you have interest in going in and seeing? Um, I'm asking them for updates. But here's another secondary reason why you're calling. I'm also asking them who they know who I could talk to to help out with their home search or someone that they know who's renting. Good way to ask this is, hey, tell me two or three people you know who are still renting. Let them name off their names. Well, Josh and Stacy and Dennis right? Cool. Do you know why they're still renting? Hey, would you be willing to email an introduction between us so I can answer any questions they have about buying a home? They might, I know they might not be ready to buy now, but I find I get to people too late in the process. I get to people when they're already out looking and they've already selected an agent. Could you just introduce them to me right now so I can see if they have any questions about buying a home? And if they don't, when they do, they'll think of me. Guys, that's a huge source of referrals. Getting in front of people before they even start thinking about it. Uh, how many of you have had a client um, that you knew that you were helping the person that they were, they were connected to and you got to them too late? I think that's happened to all of us, right? So just make sure you ask when you're going through calls with your current clients, when you're going through calls with your past clients, see who you can help. I think a lot of people don't get leads because they don't ask for them, right? And to be honest with you, the people don't know how to refer you. They don't know what you're looking for. We think they know what we're looking for. They don't, right? They don't know that... If someone got engaged, that's the perfect time to introduce them to us. Not when they're starting to look for a home because they've already went online and started to look and there's somebody online trying to grab onto them, 
Cool. So a great introduction to me is when you hear someone get engaged, introduce them to me. When you hear someone get a job promotion, uh, that's an awesome time to introduce them to me. They might be thinking about buying a new home. If you hear someone relocating, that's an awesome time to introduce to me. Uh, I have a couple agents that I work with. They trade deals all across the country. They work for eXp and they're trading deals with agents in different areas all the time. They get a finder's fee and they get reciprocated when people come back to Chicago or are relocating from a different area to Chicago. So never underestimate just what asking good questions can do for your business and the amount of leads that it can generate. So um, I think I asked this question already, but yeah. How many, <laughs> how many of us, uh, I bought a house. Oh, congrats, didn't you know I'm an agent? Oh no, I forgot. Well, that's not that person's fault. That's your fault. I always tell this story. I was at Christmas with my aunt and uncle and they were talking about this great interest rate they just got on their mortgage at Christmas. I'm like, hello, you know, that's what I do, right? And you know what they said? We did not know that's what you did. We would have used you if we would have known that was you. That's what you did. That's my fault that they didn't know that I was a lender. That's not their fault. That's my fault. So if any of you are friends with me on Facebook or social media, uh, if any of you have chatted with me, uh, there's no way you don't know that I'm a mortgage lender. That lesson was so painful for me to have two of the most important people I know in my life not use me on a mortgage. That, that um, was just so traumatic to me and hurt so bad that I promised to never let that happen again. So make sure your social media um, you're putting things about being a realtor on there. Ask people about their jobs. They'll naturally ask you about your career back. Hey, can you do me a favor? Uh, if you know anyone looking to buy, sell, uh, or invest in real estate, I can help them. I want to be their first conversation. Is there anyone you know of who you could introduce me to? Um, don't be shy about letting them know what you do. So when do I call and who do I call? Uh, I think... Monday is your VIP calls, right? I would suggest calling business people on Mondays. Uh, I like title agents. Um, I like homeowners insurance companies. I like local appraisers, okay? Call at least five business people a day. I also like financial advisors. Um, guys, I would say that financial advisors get the call when someone, when one of their clients is buying a new home, they get the call first. It's, it's either you, it's us, or it's the financial advisor, right? And sometimes if it's a divorce, it's the divorce attorney, right? So make sure you're calling these business people and forming relationships with. It shouldn't be weird to call them because you guys can help them so much. You can help them almost more than they can help you but form relationships with business professionals that can refer you at a high level. Um, so I like calling five every Friday. What would an example of this be with an insurance agent? Hey, can you ask when you're doing your insurance review? I just this morning had my review with my insurance agent. He's very good at it. Um, he checks in with me twice a year to check in on our insurance policies uh, and see if we have any questions. And then he runs um, a comparison against the different insurance companies. Cool. And I just asked him today, I said, Hey, can you add a sentence to the end of your insurance review? Can you ask them if they're willing to, if they're looking to buy a new home within the next year, or if they're looking to buy a second home or investment property within the next year? I asked him how many of these reviews he completes per week. And he said, 50. That is just leveraging me um, and an opportunity to get business 50 times per month. So if you have a homeowner's insurance agent that you're working with, make sure to ask them to add this at the end of their scripts. Uh, if you don't have an insurance agent that you're working with, um, please go get one. They talk to a ton of homeowners and they have to have an insurance agent when they buy a new home. So you guys are just natural referrers of insurance agents, and some of you might not even know that. Uh, a girl we support said 
last year, um, just our company alone, our little office in Chicago, um, helped her increase her production two times over the year before, right? So we sent her a massive amount of business because she does a great job. We need to get better at asking her to send us business back. Cool. Um, second way is when you're doing some open houses, you can do mass marketing through a system called Slida. Uh, I know there are dialers that will do this for you as well. Uh, we find through, we use a system called Avocado and Sly Dial. Hopefully some of you got here today because we had to send a Sly, Sly Dial to uh, redirect you here. Um, and I appreciate you guys being on. But that is just something that you can do um, for an open house. You can do for a client event you have. You can promote at a mass amount. It took me 45 seconds to record that voicemail. Uh, it probably went out to close to a thousand realtors today. Uh, you can do the same for open houses. There are um, campaigns that you can purchase of homeowners in the area. You can buy lists. Where do I buy my list? I buy them from Fiverr. F I V F I V F I V E R R. Uh, fiber. It's a great system and great service to buy lists from. So when you're doing marketing, you can send them through Sly Broadcast, through Avocado. It's a mass tech service where you can send videos. Okay. Don't underestimate and underutilize technology. <laughs> um, next, make sure you answer your phone. Um, I get frustrated by sometimes, as I'm sure you guys get frustrated um, by how hard it is to get hold, hold of some of our providers uh, and some of our vendors. So make sure that uh, we're answering our phone and picking up our phone. Um, if you support someone's service, if you support someone's service uh, and you promote their livelihood, a barber shop, a beauty salon, a pool guy, lawn maintenance. Do not be scared to ask for their business back in return. Uh, one of the realtors in our program, she, uh, she was one of the first realtors to net $2 million uh, per year. That's like after taxes, she nets $2 million. She's uh, one of the best realtors I've ever seen. Uh, her biggest referral source is a jeweler. She has her jeweler. She sends people to them any time that they sell a engagement ring. The jeweler asks if they're thinking about buying a new home and promotes her. It's her number one referral source. Uh, she wouldn't have that referral source if she just didn't simply ask and connect with them and ask if they could look for opportunities for them. So guys, never underestimate the power of your referrals and the amount of people you can support through just one home purchase. Like I said, there's up to 14 professionals that uh, eat off of your transaction that you created. Now, I know there's several of us in the process that help you create that transaction, but your hard work, your prospecting, your um, reputation within the market that got you that referral should lead to more. So make sure you're hitting us up, your providers, your vendors, the people that you refer, and get business back. Um, one of our number one realtors we sent a deal to today, uh, the contract came in, or this weekend, the contract came in today, right? It's simply because she asked. Um, what else can you do to generate leads? Visit a model center, visit subdivisions. Um, Guys, there has never been more traffic and new construction sites uh, and models than there is now. And a lot of those agents can't sell the home. And a lot of people coming to these homes need to sell that home before they can buy this home. So make sure you work hard on developing some relationships with people sitting in those model homes. Okay, a lot of them can't list the property and need a partner like you that can and can get it sold. Uh, I love divorce attorneys, not because I want to go through a divorce, but because they send us a lot of business. And when they do, 
it's sometimes two or three deals at a time. We have a, a divorce situation we're working on right now. It turned into three deals for us. The cash out refinance to get the husband off and then the husband's buying two homes. Um, and they trusted us to have us all have it all together. There's, it's not like a um, turbulent divorce. Uh, I have relationship with both sides. The divorce attorney though, is who got it back in my hands. Uh, so never underestimate the power of a divorce attorney. They are great referral partners. And guess what? When most people are going through a divorce, they're not gonna beat you up about your commission rate. They're not gonna, uh, hammer you about doing it for cheap. They just want to move on. They want to get to the next chapter of their life and they want to work with someone that can get them onto that next chapter. Uh, I found divorce attorneys to be just a great source of referrals. Um, make sure you're doing open houses and make sure these leads are followed up with. Uh, I see a lot of open houses where there's no sign in sheet. Uh, we use a script of our seller requires us to know everybody that's there and we want to have an inventory of everybody that walks through their home uh, now some sellers do require this but we really want it selfishly so we can follow up with them now sometimes those uh potential buyers coming through the property they are just looking at the property and sometimes they have an agent already and sometimes they don't uh, hand that list over to your preferred lender we hope it's us on this group uh, have us call on them. Sometimes people put BS realtors on there that don't actually exist and we can work hard to get them back in front of you. So that's what we want to do as your lending partner. We want to call on those leads. We want to get them in pre-approved, but we want to do everything within our power to get them point back to you if that relationship or supposed relationship on the sign-up sheet isn't actually what it is. Uh, so I would also send a weekly video to these people coming through your open houses. Make sure you send them um, a video talking about the property, talking about that area, okay? Um, promote your listing, but let them know, hey, not only can I support your search on this property, but if for some reason this property isn't for you, I know this area very, very well. I do a lot of business in it. If I can help you for any other properties. Um, <laughs> Of course, the real estate agent owns a second home. It's called our vehicle. So yes, we are in our vehicles a lot in this profession. Uh, make sure you maximize your time at it. What else can we do to generate warm leads? We can send out mailers. Uh, there's three mailers that I see that do really well for real estate agents. Number one is an evidence of success postcard. What that looks like is if you've done something fantastic, uh, you sold a property in a couple of days. I know that's a lot easier now than it has been in the past, or you sold it 110% above list, or another brokerage couldn't get this property sold and you send it in two weeks. I call these subtle brag postcards. Brag about your accomplishments. Send it out to that area. If it's in a building uh, and you sold the property, farm out to the rest of the building, let them know what a great job you did. I call these subtle brags. Uh, and if you can take a slight jab at the competition, if someone else didn't perform, put that in there. We do this all the time on the lending side. If Chase dropped the ball and couldn't get the deal done or guaranteed rate or Quicken, we do a lot of rescue deals from those three entities. Uh, we're gonna talk about it on that evidence of success postcard. We're gonna say, you know, guaranteed rate didn't get the job done. We picked it up and got it done in 10 days. Uh, and we're gonna get a quote from that client. So these are subtle brags, guys, that you can um, <clears throat> that you can put out in a marketing piece and mail it to a uh, focused area. This focused area might be the building that you sold it in, the neighborhood, um, or it might even be just across a whole demographic. You know, you guys choose who that is. Letter of the heart is another one. Uh, letter of the heart gives you a personal touch. I'm, if you remember what I said at the beginning, we have, I struggle a little bit at being really good at the relationship. So I write a personal letter once a quarter, or excuse me, once every other month to my client base, uh, to my referral partners. And I just try and talk about something I learned in life 
uh, or some adversity that I o overcame. Uh, these are not like the Christmas cards. You guys ever get the Christmas cards? It's like, uh, you know, Billy's a straight A student and Sally's going to St uh, Stanford and everything's great in our life. Nothing is wrong. Uh, that's not what you want to put on here. You want to share pain and be real. So, gosh, I've talked about struggling with seasonal depression in mine. I've talked about, um, you know, how scared I was when our twins were born premature at 28 weeks and what that did to the rest of my life and how we overcame it and some charities we support through it. Um, if you want examples of Letter of the Heart, put in the chat uh, that you would like an example and we'll get you these. Now, I used to struggle writing these because they were personal. Um, I just had to get over it and write them because my coaches made me do it. Uh, what I can tell you is I never have a better response from my client base, my past clients, my referral partners of when I send out one of these letters. The leads just pour in, people reach out, people appreciate them, and um, it's just a game changer. You know, kind of the third thing I think you can send out as a mailer is uh, a farm and just really farm a building or a specific neighborhood. Let them know that you are the experts uh, and why and why they should consider you to buy or sell real estate with. Uh, it is super duper important if you do do a farm um, to be committed to it and to send it out every month. And it is not cheap. Uh, and sometimes it's going to take a year and a half, two years. Uh, there's some agents that I work with I can see on the call. I know they've farmed to a certain area for up to three years before they ever got a deal from it. It's the consistency. It's the recognition of your brand. It's the constant um, communication with that client or potential client until you get the business. So uh, evidence of success, I love. Letter of the heart, I love. And I think farming is really good for agents as well. And these work especially really well in high-rise buildings. So make sure you're mailing something out. Have reasons to reach out. I think it's good to reach out to our clients twice a year. Um, add value in these reach outs. Have vendors that can help them out. I think asking for a will and trust attorney after they've bought the home, a landscaper, an interior designer, um, anything like that. Make sure you have vendors on your contacts with the client that you can reach out with. <clears throat> um, do not forget about renters, okay? Um, I think a lot of agents, when they start off, miss a huge opportunity to build their business by not showing renters and not doing leases. Um, leases and renters that eventually buy a home. I think everyone's dream is to buy a home and you're seeing it even more in the millennial generation. Um, I think reaching out to renters because they will become homeowners is super duper smart. So how can you do this? You can mail to an apartment complex. You can do a home buying seminar that you promote uh, nearby the apartment complex. Um, and those would be the two best ways to go after renters. Uh, make sure they see the value of buying instead of renting. We have a great tool called a rent versus buy comparison. Uh, make sure you guys, if you have a, a listing that is in the price point that a first time home buyer would go after, I usually call that about below about 700. Um, have a rent versus buy comparison at your open house. It is just something of value that shows how wealth is accumulated through home ownership. Um, and it just, it's one of the best value ads I've ever seen as far as a marketing tool. So if you guys ever need that, make sure to reach out to your loan officer who invited you today and get that tool. It's a game changer at your open houses and it opens the door to other conversations uh, with people passing through that might not be your client, but this value add might be the thing that puts them in front of you uh, as the expert. Uh, so never miss the boat on, on renters. <laughs> you want to sleep on it? I'm not selling you a mattress. Uh, we all know in this market right now, we cannot sleep on it. That house will be gone. Um, so 
This is where I talk a little bit about closing techniques. Um, good closing techniques. I think the number one thing right now is, hey, make it your option to cancel on this contract, not one of the other five buyers that are gonna put an offer on it. I love that script. I hear a lot of my agents use that. Make it your opportunity and your option to go through the home inspection, to go through the attorney review. Um, you can't wait, you can't sleep on it. We need to make a decision now, make it your option to cancel, not somebody else's. Cool. Um, putting, putting in a lot of data into their decision. Uh, we have what's called a um, future value estimator, and it just shows current appreciation trends uh, versus how much the property would increase. So showing the client that the, like the perception is right now they're overpaying for a home, um, support it with data that if these trends continue and current appreciation continues, it's just a minor setback. Uh, my home I bought two years ago, the appraisal came in $150,000 light. I'm going through a refinance right now and it just came in $400,000 over what I paid for it. So that was a temporary setback two years ago for long-term appreciation. Now, I didn't expect it to catch up this quickly, but it has. Um, so make sure you're supporting any closing statements you have with clients, with graphs, with pictures, with trends, support your recommendation with, um, with trends and data. Um, other good ways to create home buyers. I uh, see a lot of people, we mentioned it um, at trade shows, bridal, bridal shows, um, bridal expos, they call them. Just knowing people within that industry, wedding planners, um, it's very natural to get married and want to buy a new home. And I see a lot more people buying it before they get married now than I ever have before. Uh, so make sure you're participating in those events or that you have a wedding planner or two that you can generate leads from. Networking groups. Create a sphere of influence. If you don't have one, create one. BNI groups are great. Uh, Rotary is a organization I belong to. Uh, never have lunch alone. Make sure you're taking your sphere of influence out for coffee for lunch. We call it breaking bread. Uh, in, in our coaching program, we require three of them per week. So make sure you're networking with top professionals. If you don't get if you don't get referrals, it's a lot of times because you're not asking. So we call these current client referrals. Make sure you're tracking them. Make sure you're educating your clients on what a good referral is for you. Like I mentioned, someone getting married, someone getting a job promotion, right? Someone complaining about their home. Um, make sure you're constantly asking for people's help. People want to help you, they just don't know how. We found we have to say, hey, what homeowners do you know? Who do you know that owns a home? Well, I know Josh and I know Stacy and I know Dennis. Cool, can you introduce them to me so I can do a mortgage review with them? Who do you know who's currently renting? Well, I know Vern and I know um, Adam and I know Sam. Okay, cool. Can you also introduce them to me? That's six referrals, guys, to, to clients, right? So I found most people's brains are like a computer file. You got to click on it, make them think about it. Who do I know who's a homeowner? And then the drop down goes down. I know Josh, I know Stacy, I know Dennis. Okay, thank you. Can you introduce them to me? Okay, so make sure you have touch in and contacts on your current clients and your past clients, and you can't do this if you're not picking up the phone and calling these lists, and ask them for the referrals. They want to help you. Set the stage for referrals. Uh, when I meet with a client initially, we always tell them, hey, we know we're going to call you every Tuesday with an update. Uh, we know we're doing a great job. If you 
provide us a referral or two throughout this transaction. This is gonna consume your life for the next 45 days. You're gonna be talking about it a lot and you're gonna hear other people wanna talk about it. When you hear those people talk about it, could you send a warm introduction for us? So make sure you ask. Um, I find most referrals aren't received because people don't ask. I don't know, we're on about the truck. <laughs> Everybody likes to eat. So here's a more about client parties. Um, this has become a little bit harder to navigate through the new surge of COVID, um, but we do do client events every quarter. Um, give you a little tip. Make sure right now that you can do client events either virtually or in person. We were prepared to do this virtually if we had to, and uh, unfortunately it came to that. Make sure your client parties are the same. Uh, we have um this they call it sip and paint right where you have some wine and an artist teaches you how to paint we've had that and uh, we've had to shift gears and not done it live at the uh, art studio and we sent all the materials to the client eight referrals uh six of them that closed within um a month of that event so six deals, we make about 4,000 per deal. That's 24,000. It cost me two grand to put on that event and send out all the materials. So very much worth my time and a great ROI, 12 times our ROI. Um, you can do them at your home. Um, I find that to be the best client parties, the ones I've had at my house. You just get to connect with your clients on an intimate level. Uh, and you can do this for your VIPs, your referral partners too. Uh, you can do drop-ins. I see a lot of agents do drop-ins. Uh, it works great if you can drop into their place of work because their coworkers are around them. They're gonna help them eat the cookies or the pastries that you brought in. And they're naturally gonna ask about who that was, why they sent you or why they dropped by with cookies or pastries. Um, those are just opportunities to check back in and follow up after you do those pop buys to ask them for referrals. Hey, was there anyone at work that day uh, that you'd be willing to introduce me to? Um, so these are just reasons to follow up with people. A lot of people do these events and then don't follow up. It's a waste of your time. Just don't do the events. You got to have the follow up after the event. That's where the real referrals come. And uh, guys, these are warm leads that close and close easily. Uh, I find when I'm referred with a lot of value from our past clients, from our current clients, from you, our top agents, um, we don't have to go through the whole song and dance of rate and costs. They just trust us and they want to work with us. Uh, so client events are a great driver of referrals. <clears throat> um, find some commonality. Um, a lot of people will go in a bike club and start a bike club and invite their past clients. I've seen some agents do really, really well with March Madness brackets, and then they pay out uh, the winner of the March Madness bracket and have it go to charity. Um, we, we have a casino night for all of our agents. We paid, I think, 10 grand last year to their favorite charities. Um, know what people's interests are and start a, a group around them. It will allow you to connect with these referral partners or your clients at a, a very high level uh, and a more personal level. Um, when you do these either groups or when you do these client parties, guys, a lot of people obsess about the number of people there. I always share the story. I had a happy hour once where only one realtor showed up, one, and there was like 35 that had RSVP'd. Uh, I was a little embarrassed. But her and I hung out, had a couple of drinks together, got to know each other. Uh, she was my number one referral source last year, uh, almost double the next uh, realtor. Um, we made over $300,000 off of her referrals, uh, closed over $300,000 in business. Now, I used to focus on the numbers, but now I care about the quality of the conversations at these meetings. So don't overthink it. Don't worry about how many people are going to show up. Uh, just throw them. A lot of the times, it's about the invite more than it is the event themselves. It's your name, your brand popping back in their mind and 
setting yourself apart from the others that are trying to contact them. Your marketing dollars are more towards the relationship than they are the transaction and people see that over time. And these leads that you get from these people will convert at a much higher level because of it. What else can you do? I see uh, a lot of agents do door hangers for local marketing. This works great if you have open houses too. Um, get a part of homeowners association boards. Wow, that is a great referral source. A uh, lot of work, great referral source. Uh, so if you can consult an HOA, if you can find contacts within several homeowners association and add value to them, uh, if you can be on one in a association that you live in or a building you live in, uh, they're just gonna naturally come to you when I say they, I mean the homeowners as a natural expert. Uh, and if you sell real estate, um, it's just gonna create a lot of business for you. So these are other areas that you can get involved in and generate a lot of leads that will convert at a high level. <laughs> You've been asking me questions for two hours on a Sunday and you tell me you already have a realtor. Has this happened to any of you? So I see a lot of agents doing buyer uh, contracts right now, just contracts that say, hey, you're going to look at this many properties with me. You're obligated and committed to working with me on any of these X amount of properties that I show you. After X amount of properties, I can fire you, you can fire me, or we can uh, extend another contract. Make sure you don't let this happen to you. Um, be guarded of your time, be guarded of your weekends, be guarded of how much effort you have to put in in this market to find someone a home. I don't know about you all, I'll raise my hand for us. It is about two to three times harder right now to get a buyer under contract, would you guys agree? It's a lot of freaking work. I know that because of the amount of numbers we have to run for the, pro for the buyers. Uh, I had a few of my loan partners couple months ago complaining a little bit about how hard it is. And I had to quickly correct them and say, imagine our realtor partners that sent us this deal. We don't have to show property. They've shown that client eight or nine properties just to get that interest. And seven of them are already gone. So you are going to keep running those numbers. You're going to like it. And <laughs> you are not going to complain because it's much harder on our realtors than it is on you. Um, so just a tip and tactic that I heard uh, from a seminar I was just at of taking control of the transaction, especially in this environment, because there's a lot of work y'all have to do. And I think it elevates your level of professionalism when you have that said contract. <clears throat> a couple other places you can meet agents. Um, I've seen a few of you, I love them. Like, I think it's really smart. You guys are pretty mobile in your profession and uh, you work from place to place. A lot of times at coffee shops, I love the stickers that say, Hi, I'm a realtor, ask me questions about real estate or do you know anyone looking to buy or sell real estate? I think it's super smart. Uh, connect with the people around you. Uh, I see some agents will do like a hour long coffee where they buy all the coffee and they're there for financial advice, partner with a financial advisor partner with a lender, um, buy out a coffee house, buy a cup of coffee for everyone that comes through and be there to offer advice. Um, I think that's a great way to generate some good leads um, and meet your top 50 favorite past clients and your VIPs in person at these coffee houses. Um, this is how we build relationships. Relationships equal referrals. And remember, there's always three things that we can do to get the business. It's the relationship, it's being an expert and an advisor, uh, and it's having tight uh, sales script and being willing to close a client hard when it's the right thing for them to do. <clears throat> Connect at events, find common interests, animal shelters. I, I love how just involved in the community many of you are. Like it, it inspires me to see some of your Facebook posts, to see how much you pour back into our community that gives us so much. Uh, if you're not doing it, find something you're passionate about. There'll be a lot of people that wanna help you out and help your business out. 
Uh, we've done a lot of animal rescue work in the past with Chicago English Bulldog Rescue. I can't tell you, it's, it's never been about getting business out of it. It's been about helping the dogs uh, and the people that are a part of it. <laughs> but I can't tell you how many deals <clears throat> have come from that group over the years. We're very passionate about March of Dimes. Uh, our, our twin daughters who are now six were born at 28 weeks and very premature. And the March of Dimes was a big part of uh, their survival and just uh, consulting us as parents. We've given a lot to them. Uh, gosh, I can't even begin to tell you how many. That's not why I did it. It's not why I do it. But the business just seems to follow when you do the right things, when you pour back to your community, when you give time, when you give effort. I think people are smart and realize it's genuine and want to help out your business um, to help you. So uh, find some groups like this that you can become a part of and, and pour into them not only with your dollars, but with your time, and uh, you will see the business reciprocated back. <clears throat> and the, uh, the best thing is the referrals are very, very warm, added with a lot of value, and once again, they convert at a high level. Um, there's a few other ways to keep in touch. I love, love, love HomeBot. HomeBot is a technology newsletter that automates the value of homes in their area and assigns them an automated value. Now, I've had mixed bag, I've had a mixed bag of responses from my agents uh, on this because they feel like I'm stepping on their toes a little bit with the value of the property. And I, I said, it's all how we, um, it's all how we set it up to the client, right? If we set it up to the client that you're the value expert and this is just data and the data is derived from certain sources, it's going to lead to opportunities for you to talk to them, to solidify that automated value. Um, so we use a newsletter called HomeBot. It had an 89% open rate on our last newsletter, 89%. I do videos. I um, do postcards, like I've told you. I do letter of the hearts. They're much more expensive than HomeBot. I promise I'm not getting an 89% open rate. Um, our videos are about 18%. So we love to keep in touch in monthly newsletter. It's called HomeBot. It just assigns them an automated value of their property and it keeps the dialogue going about their home, about real estate, about values. Uh, so that's a, a way we keep in touch. Um, I wanted to open it up just for some other ideas on this part. What are some other things that you guys are doing to stay in touch with your clients that I maybe didn't hit on today? So feel free to unmute yourself and, and just uh, blurt out the answer. Anything else that any of you guys are doing that you wanted to share? Hi, everyone. I usually do a video. I think she was saying video. Sorry, your, uh, your, your technology froze up. Videos are great. We use a system called Abichado. Uh I found that most people are moving off of email and only going to text. Avocado is a video text message, um, and we send a video to our clients once a month. Uh, we send it to our referral partners once a week. Um, so once a month to past clients, once a week to our referral partners. Uh, we use a system called Avocado. Some people use BombBomb, which is an email-based. Uh, I think videos are free. Uh, putting videos on social media, a must, a must. Uh, people need to know you're the expert at what you do. Uh, they might not even watch the video, uh, but it just, when people see you constantly engaged, I've had a lot of former high school friends, former college friends. I don't even think they know what I do, but they know I'm in mortgages. And uh, when they need a mortgage, they come to me for advice. Um, that's all that we really had today. Um, there are a few other things that we can, we can talk to just to kind of end, um, but put some ideas in the chat 
if there's some other things that you are doing to stay in touch with your clients, um, here is my challenge to you. Um, I told you that my income um, has went up almost 1200% since I started in coaching. There are two things that I do uh, that have allowed this. I track my activity. That is everybody I talked to last week. That's 75 talk tos. That's uh, 12 face to faces. And that's 10 thank you cards and 30 outbound calls every single day. I believe the reason I've had the growth that I have is I've been committed to making 30 outbound calls every single day. I have not missed, I do not miss, uh, and it is something that I'm passionate about. It is my job as a sales professional to make that phone ring and not wait for it to ring. And uh, I believe I have had a steady growth of production uh, now that lasts almost seven years due to making those 30 calls every single day. I look at that as my number one job when I walk into the office and I do not leave until it's gone. So you go to the next couple of slides, please, Gary. Um, that does lead us to, to age quickly. <laughs> Being a real estate agent is the least stressful career I had. Jessica, age 29, I love that slide. <laughs> Yes, I did not. Uh, I did have a full head of hair not too long ago until I started in in this industry. Um, I love videos. I think videos are cheap. They're free, uh, and too many people overthink them. There's a lot of content that you guys have access to through the uh, and through the um, the MLS through just great trends graphs that people want. Um, that you can put in video. Don't overthink them. Um, there's a lot of things that you guys have access to that provides value. So we absolutely love doing videos. And make sure this is our shameless plug, work with the right lender. Uh, so a couple things I wanted to end with that can really help you guys out uh, as you're having challenges with multiple offers. Uh, we do have a program called our Signature Select that allows someone to buy a home before selling their home. We do not count their departing residents against them. I had three and a half million dollars in production that uh, I wouldn't have been able to close at my previous company. So if you guys get two and a half percent on that, I created $87,500 in commissions for my realtor partners last month alone through our signature select program. It allows someone to buy a new home before selling their current home and not the departing residence does not count against them. Uh, make sure you're talking to your loan officer about bridge loans. That taps into the equity of their current home and puts it down on the new home. Uh, there are a lot of buyers out there that don't think they can buy and obsess about having to sell their home and don't wanna sell their home because they're scared about not finding the next home. Uh, this is a great solution for those people. Um, I will just open up the last uh, couple minutes with any questions that you guys might have, comments. Uh, thank you for spending time with us today. I hope you took at least two or three things. I know that was a lot. Uh, don't do all of them. Take two to three things away and make them a regular um, practice within your business. And I promise you'll do more business the rest of the year that you weren't going to do without it. Any questions, anything I can help anybody with? Thank you guys. Well, I'll hang out for a few minutes. If any of you have one-on-one -on -one questions, uh, we would love, love, love an opportunity to uh, earn more of your business. Uh, if once again, we can send you anything any examples within this, a letter of the heart, an evidence of success, a farming postcard. Uh, we can send you the theme day calling plan that my coaching program, um, I, I shouldn't say promotes, they make you do it. It is a, you have to do it type of thing. Um, we would be happy to send anything. So make sure you, uh, you put your email in here and we will send a recap to anyone with this PowerPoint, <coughs> with any of the um, just lists on here that you want to see a VIP list, a top favorite, 
50 past client lists, anything that you need. <coughs> and I'll hang out for any questions that you guys have. Thank you guys for tuning in. And if you got questions, just go ahead and blurt them out. Take yourself off mute, bottom left-hand corner. Hi, Chad. Thank you so much for that information. It's very valuable. Um, can you give me, my name is Shonda, by the way. Um, the hey, name Shonda. of the, hi, the name of the systems that you mentioned for the video calls. Uh, Avocado. Can you spell that for me? Uh, A V A C H A D O. Okay. All right. Just as I thought. Okay. All right. And then you mentioned um, Fond Bomb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's email based. Avocado is text message based. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Bomb bombs about ninety dollars a month. Avocados five hundred dollars a month. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Did that help? Yes, it did. Yeah, and a, a great contact once again is Homebot. You can shoot videos through then them, and uh, the lender pays seventy five percent of it. The realtor pays twenty five. So it's highly discounted for realtors. They want to help promote your business. Any other questions? 